Welcome to Timber Frame Design using, using SketchUp Part 4. And our goal will be to add pegs to our model. And you can see that the pegs are here. Now you're currently only seeing them in X-ray mode. Um, if we switch X-ray mode off, you don't see them, but they are still there. So we'll turn X-ray mode back on, and we will go back to our model that does not have pegs. You'll see that it's in x-ray, so obviously the pegs are not there. I'm going to take x-ray mode off. And so the skills we're going to be building here are hide and unhide. And we'll be using the TF peg tool, which again, like the joinery things we were doing, um, like create joint, that is only possible after you've downloaded the extension timber frame extensions from the extension warehouse. So that's going to be necessary. If you have any questions on that, refer back to the first video in this series. So <clears throat> we'll start off by putting pegs in here. Um, they will go through this top plate and through the tenon on this post. So the easiest way to do this is I'm going to click on the top plate. I'm going to go edit hide. And that's gone and now I can put my pegs in and then I can come back and unhide that. So to do this, I'm going to click on, I'm going to highlight the joint itself, not the post. And then I'm going to go up to extensions, TF rubies, and then you'll see TF peg tool. Now if that does not allow you to click on it, then that means you have selected the entire post and we need to specifically click on just that joint. So you'll know you have it right when you're able to select this tool. Now, something to keep in mind about the peg tool is it does not give you a specific diameter of peg. That's up to you. All you're really doing in this tool is locating the center position of your peg hole. So you, as long as you drill at the center of that spot, Whatever size peg you want, you have the correct diameter of drill bit and you're good to go. Then, of course, you could offset that for draw boring if that's what you choose to do. So this feature, this tool is a little bit tricky to use. Um, sometimes you have to rotate things around as you're doing it. So I want to go over that again. To rotate things, you can use this orbit tool or what I do is I just use my mouse and I hold the wheel down on my mouse and then just drag things around and that allows me to shift where I want. And that's a really important function. So let's go back to the peg tool feature. I'm going to, I want to put two pegs in here and I'm one, uh, one and a half inches from this face and one and a half inch from the shoulder. So it's going to be one and a half by one and a half. That'll be a little bit different on other joints, but for this joint, that's what we want. So instead of pulling it down from the top, I like to collect uh, to connect to it at the bottom where the shoulder is, because that's really what's more important. You want to have a known distance from the shoulder and then have plenty of relish on the end of the tenon. So I'm going to click here and then I'm going to click. I'm going to kind of move my mouse. I'm not holding the mouse button down. I just clicked it once here and let up. Then I'm going to come in here and click and it drew a circle. Now I haven't typed anything in yet, so it just draws an arbitrary, arbitrary circle. So I'm going to type 1.5 inch comma 1.5 inch and then enter. And you see it shifted that a little bit. So that sets my first peg. Now it's going to be a little bit tricky for me if I try to go this corner and then come over here. Well, it actually works. So we'll go that route. So I'm now going to type 1.5 inch comma 1.5 inch and that will put that on the right. Sometimes you actually have to rotate it around and click and then really just line your mouse up on it. So if that becomes frustrating. So you'll see that since these posts are copies of each other, wherever I put this on this peg hole, it automatically it goes up there. So the peg hole there, I'm going to go over to my select tool, click outside somewhere so that closes that up. But not on a bay. Uh, plate back in. So I'm going to go edit on high and last. And then there it is. If I go to 
X-ray view, you can see that the pegs are there. We still need to draw peg, pegs on the tie beam. We still need to draw pegs on the bottom. So I'm going to go out of X-ray mode. And that's view face style. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the pegs on the post. So I will hide this little base piece here. I'm going to go edit hide. And then I'm going to rotate this around. My select tool, I want to click just that joint, not the whole post. And then I go up to extensions, TF Ruby, TF Peg Tool. And then I'm the corner. On this one, I'm going to do them a little bit different because I don't have, I'm, I'm sorry, yes, I only have four inches across the face of this. So if I go inch and a half, inches are going to overlap. So I'm going to go. So I'm going to click here and then click down on the face. And then I'm going to type 1.25 inch on a 1.5 inch and enter. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Grab that one and then drag over here. Click again. 1.25 inch, 1.5 inch. And it's there. So I'm going to go into X ray mode. And you will see the pegs are also over here. Right? Send that around. You can see that they're there. I'm going to unhide. And the thing left to do is peg on the tie beam. Now, I'm going to have to put on both ends of the tie beam because it's not a copy of itself. So I copy the face over and if I had updated one, it would update both. But we so we're going to do it. I'm going to hide this post. And here, got that paint. So the, normally you pull your I just want to make two inches in, which will mean enough to be that tenon. So I need to kind of rotate it where it's going to go. So it can see if this corner. Point five inches. Top, top, inches. Yeah. So here's where I'm going to rotate things around because I really want to be able to grab this little spot. I'm going to click here once, let them and click out here. And see how I got that message? That means I'm not, I don't have it enough to know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to get around. I'll try and then that. that worked. So again, I'm going to use the same measurements, 1.5 inch, 2.5 inch, enter. And when I rotate it around, you can see that both peg holes are there. This is peg holes. They're both two and a half inches from the end. Now, what I do is I more if I want to that does a nice look because they aren't lined up. More decorative appearance. It wasn't necessary in this case. And typically, when you're designing a frame and you do this, you don't need to offset your pegs um, unless you choose to, which, of course, is always an option. So I'm going to select that tool, click outside that. I'm going to hide. And now, if I go to the demo, you'll see I have holes inside, but not on this side. I still need to do that. So I'm going to edit This and I'm going to do the same thing here, like that tenon. And to, to do so, I I triple click, um, and I'm going to go to extensions and TF Rubies and TF Pet Tool. Again, and I'm going to end 
older this time. I'm going to click here. And then type 1.5 inch. I'm at 2.5 inch. And that's there. And then I'm going to try to come down here and click and drag in there. Same as 1.5 inch, 2.5 inch, and then return. And then I'm going to click outside it. Unhide last. So I'll do one last load to make sure I peg there. And when I'm, you don't see the pegs. But when I go to print this through uh, shop drawings, which will be five, uh, we'll see that they actually do show up. So I'm going to just do a little preview of that. If I, I click and right click and TF make shop drawings, you'll see that these little marks here are where the peg holes will be drilled. And so they don't give you an actual meter. You just, when, when we start putting dimensions on shop drawings in our next episode, you'll get a dimension from the intersection of that little cross which will tell you where the center point of your drill hole for your peg go. So we'll close that out. And that's the conclusion of this episode. Like I said, the next one will focus on making shop drawings, which will be a very useful thing. And again, one more thing that you can only do if you have downloaded the timber framing extensions from the extension warehouse.